We're going to try to do a real quick demonstration uh, looking at something like this. Now I'm going to simplify this painting for the purpose of doing uh, a, a, a scene with shallow river water. What colors did we use? For the basic drawing, we white, a little bit of a little bit of white, some blue, and some dark red to make a bluish purple. A bluish purple. I don't want a reddish purple. I want a bluish purple because the bluish purple will cooperate with everything I put into this painting. So how did we do this? We started with a light, warm horizon color. And we used white, burnt sienna, and a little bit of blue. So I'm going to start with a light, warm horizon color. That's going to go back there. And I'm going to think in terms of that strata that we talked about. Now the technique of painting that I've shown you is called pool painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some straight raw sienna and I'm going to put a little bit of blue with it and a little touch of burnt sienna. And I'm going to put a stain. That's a little bit too green. I'm going to break it up a little bit more with raw sienna. And this is going to be kind of a generic color. Let me take a little bit of burnt sienna. A generic color for the bottom of my my uh, my stream. In a situation like this, we are going to attempt to paint the bottom of the stream the color of wet rocks under the water and what's being reflected off the top of the water. So I'm going to use a little bit of orange here in a couple places. So I'm just putting in that base color like. Now I'm going to go back and remember what we did with the sky yesterday. We went back and softened all our edges in the sky with a vertical stroke. I softened my sky here with a vertical stroke. I'm going to have some accidental variations of when color. When I do this, I'm going to want to put a little suggestion of this in the water. Now I got it a little bit darker here, a little darker. Then it got darker still. That wet base of the riverbed is automatically blending with some of my reflections. Reflections in water appear to be vertical, while movement in water appears to be horizontal. I'm gonna now, put the suggestion of reflection in the water with short little vertical strokes. Now, let's suggest some rock. What's the easiest recipe for a natural gray or a natural rock? Well, we talked about it a little bit yesterday. I'm going to start with some white, burnt sienna, not right into the white. I'm going to take some burnt sienna here and blue. Now, as I go into this, look what happens. White, burnt sienna, and blue gives me a natural gray. So I'm going to start. What, how did we do trees? We started with a number two color. Now, if I start here, I can load my brush and start in this area and work towards that bank all the way back there. And as I'm picking up wet paint, I'm causing my paintbrush to show the variations in rocks as I'm going back in space. I have this color. I'm going to take some white in there now and a touch of orange. And voila. I've got the color of some rocks that are being hit by the sunlight. Now as I go back in space, I can 
kind of darken and cool them a little bit. And then I'm going to soften some of my edges here. There's rocks back in space. Now, there's rocks in the river. Some of them are a little bit lighter, some of them a little darker. Now I'm going to add some white. And I'm going to show the power of the sun hitting some of them by putting a little touch of orange with it. We want to be careful not to have too many rocks that are about the same size. We want some variations. Now, I've got my number two and my number ones there now. What I need to do is I need to put some number threes in my rock. So I'm going to take some burnt sienna and blue. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get some number three colors. And maybe a, a little touch of that cool red. I want to get some shadows in my rocks now. I actually can start to almost see some reflection of rocks in the water with a short vertical stroke right here in the front. They're back there in the trees. So I need very, very little definition of these guys. Just a little bit. And I'm going to soften these edges up because I don't want too sharp of a line here. Because this is back in you the You cannot distance. paint water. You can only paint what's under the water, which is wet rocks, and what's on top of the water being reflected off. Now, we have not shown the design of the, the shadows in the rocks under the surface of We're the water. We're going to show the, the design of shadows, the design of some of these rocks that are under the surface here. There's going to be some darks. But we want them to be darks that are, are fitting with the design of rocks, fairly flat rocks, that are found in the, in the base of a stream. And those rocks have cracks and crevices. They have cracks and crevices that we're aware of. Some of them are a little bit longer than others. Okay? So we little variations. You, you can only see them right here in the front. Now, with those rocks, some of them are being hit by sunlight and appear so you have a pattern of light and shadow in the bottom of the stream. So I'm going to try to show where the light is hitting the, the surface of some of these rocks that's under the water. Get the warmth of the sun. And sometimes you might get a little bit of a red, reddish hue that's off to the side a little bit more. Of these, some of these rocks that are uh, that are under the surface, and I like to put a little bit more intense just in a couple of spots. Let me lighten this up a little bit more. I want this to be the lightest rock, right? here. Now we don't have to obsess over too many of these colors being repeated in the water. You know, we've got enough going on now. Basically, all we have to do now is put a couple of tweaks of some real light light hitting a few of these rocks. I am now showing the transparent nature of water. 
the reflections bouncing off and I'm seeing the bottom of the stream. Now I can see the bottom of the he stream here, but I can't see it so well way back here. So why bother? So what color is my sky? My sky is white with a little touch of burnt sienna and blue. I'm going to start with a real light sky color and watch what happens as we start to show the motion in the water. Reflections are vertical and movement is horizontal. So I'm going to start with real light back here. That's the real light sky that's up there. As I come forward, I want my sky to get a little bit bluer. I'm coming forward. I'm going to get a little bluer. Now, As I get down here, I find that I'm going to have to get even bluer. Now, in this shadow area back here, definitely darker. It's going to come off a little darker in that shadow area. And over here, I want it to be a little darker. But here, right in this white water area or this transparent area I'm going to go back to a lighter color this is the hammer stroke that's a good question I'm using a hammer stroke which is bang 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 on the knife edge of the brush I'm going to take that and it's bang, 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 bang as I go with and against the bristle of the brush. Now I'm going to put a lighter one right in here. You got room for a little bit of reflection. Sometimes there's a little bit of what I would call a, a touch of white water going around a rock. So I'm going to take a little bit of white water, but I don't want it to be warm. I want it to be a little bit of a gray. A very light, but cool gray. And so I'm going to suggest a little white water here. And maybe a little trough of white water here. So... Water is, you paint, if you can see it, if it's shallow water in a stream bed, you, you paint water by painting the stream bed that's all wet, and then you paint it by what's being reflected off the surface, and then the movement, okay, the reflections are vertical, and the movement is horizontal in appearance. So you do the vertical reflections first, and then you, when, after you've blocked everything in and repeated things where they need to be repeated, as far as what's above and what's in the water, then you go ahead with your uh, movement, which appears primarily horizontal in nature. Okay, that's it.